إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفض لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو الفضل العظيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود غريبا كما بدأ فطوبى للغرباء صدق الله وصدق رسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Well, praise is all due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us a beautiful faith, a beautiful deen, a beautiful way of life. Islam was born in persecution. And because it was born in persecution, whenever the believers go through a period of panic, of trouble, of chaos, we live in a chaos mosque, then there's always a page in the leaves of the seerah that they can turn we turn the seerah, this exactly describes what we are going through. The Rasul has gone through much more trouble than what we even imagine we can go through. We think of the Wadi of Abi Talib where for three years the Rasul had that economic boycott. We think of the persecution where it was so uh, fierce that the Rasul had to send his own family members and his own um, close ashab to Habasha, not once but twice, to Medina, other places, Hijrah, it wasn't easy to make Hijrah for them. And so um, that's the beauty of Islam. The other beauty of Islam is that those who persecute the truth are often persecuted by the truth. Umar bin Khattab went out to assassinate the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he went to the house of his sister Fatima and when he came there, he read the ayat of Surah Taha, Ma anzalna Qur'an alayka li tashqa, immediately became Muslim. But prior to that, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua, Allah let one of the Amarain, Umar bin Khattab or Umar bin Hisham, let them embrace Islam. And this is another sunnah of the Rasul. That those who curse us, those who are out to harm us, we actually pray for them, pray that they become Muslim. We should actually be praying that uh, Trump and Carson and all these people become Muslim. Uh, we look at the Mongols. The Mongols ran over Baghdad in 1258. They sacked the city, that beautiful city of Baghdad. They used to pile up the heads of those people they massacred, which is uh, wards and barbarians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used uh, one or uh, few generations after their children became the finest Muslims. And we had the Ottoman Empire ruled almost for five, uh, 700 years. Uh, we had the Safavids. We also had the Mughal Empire uh, ruled more than 500 years in India. Those very barbarians, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned them into the finest uh, champions of Islam. And so we don't have to worry about Islam. One thinks of the story of Abdul Muttalib, the uh, Jad and the grandfather of uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abraha came from Yemen and he wanted to destroy the Kaaba. Abdul Muttalib missed his 200 camels and he went to, as chieftain of Mecca, to the tent of Abraha and demanded his camels. Abraha was quite shocked. He's coming, I'm, I'm expecting you to intervene on behalf of the Kaaba. Ask me, why don't you just stop uh, destroying the Kaaba? Abdul Muttalib simply said, well, those camels belong to me, I want my camels. The Lord of the house will see to his house. Allah will see to his own house. And Allah then sent down the Tayran Ababi, those uh, birds that destroyed the army of, of Abraham. We don't have to worry about Islam. But these are grand opportunities for us to become spiritual. These are grand opportunities for each and every one of us to become an ambassador, to become a champion for Islam. 
many of the non-Muslims are now asking us, what can we do to move it forward to show you that we are your allies? Do we have a game plan? Do we know how to move that forward? <coughs> I think of many of the Jewish communities. Um, in the Second World War, two shiploads of Jews were turned away. They were fleeing the Holocaust, but their shiploads were turned away from the shores of America. They have planted a peace bowl in front of every hospital, every school, every university. We need something similar, a movement where people sign up as citizens of conscience, as citizens of compassion and of courage. And that is possible. And perhaps as a strategy, we also need to uh, go beyond victimhood. So even though we are in a tight spot, we may still say, no, we are acting as we're fully in control of the situation. Ibn Taymiyyah was in prison very frequently, and people came to him for consultation. As they asked Ibn Taymiyyah for advice, the Imam used to always have a smile on his face. And they couldn't understand. He's in prison, but it seems that people outside the walls of the prison seem to be more in prison. And Ibn Taymiyyah says, um, Quote to the ayah of the Quran, Baltinu fihi rahma wa zahiruhu min qibli al -adab. Sometimes in the eye of the storm, there is um, tremendous peace, that rahma, that inner peace, whereas from outside it seems that it's chaotic. <coughs> we need to find that inner peace, but we can only have an inner peace if we work on ourselves. This is a time for us to Put away some of that television, the games that your children are playing. Might be wasting hours and hours on those games, uh, doing many other. Let them become familiar with the history, not only of Muslims, but also of the other people. In the Chinese people, in, on November 14, 1872, had the greatest, the largest lynching in the history of this country took place when 17 Chinese people were lynched show people we know their history. The German people, and this is in the First World War, so from the First World War, many suspected that the Germans were too attached to the Kaiser, and this uh, Hitler wasn't on the scene, this was uh, many years before that. There were 3.4 million Germans in the USA, 488 papers in German, many of them gave sermons in their churches in German, and then, overnight, they became enemies of the state. All those newspapers disappeared. It was forbidden to speak German in the, the churches. It was a type of felony. And people were so crazy, they even killed some of the German shepherd dogs and the Dutch hounds. Anything that sounded German. Took the records of Beethoven and German composers and broke that in the streets. Uh, it seems that sometimes this country goes through what we call paroxysm of paranoia. And we need to be clear where we stand. We need to have courage. You know, we will be beaten up a little or so on. But that's fine. We have the resilience to bounce back. Islam was in, at the Volga. The Tatar Muslims were there for about 200 years. And then Ivan, the Russian, conquered the area. He destroyed every masjid, but took the most, the, the Jami masjid, the most beautiful masjid of Kazan, and he transferred that to Moscow. The date is still there as the same uh, Saint Basil Cathedral. 200 years later, Catherine took over, and she then um, allowed them to have freedom of religion. The Tatars immediately bounced back. All of them came back into Islam. 200 years of suppression meant nothing, almost like a, um, this uh, type of um, in the mattress, uh, what do we call that, a spring, the mattress spring, you press it, you take off that hand from that spring, bounces back in with, with, all, the, with all vengeance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has His ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that He will preserve this religion. But we need to become champions for Islam. Each and every one of us, don't wait for a year from now. Don't wait for, till November 4th uh, for something to happen. 
you need to be proactive. You need to make sure that you uh, reach out to your neighbors. Uh, those uh, colleagues of you at work who belong to certain churches, ask them what they are doing. Your university, make sure they become compassionate universities. Sign out to charters. See what you can do. It's amazing what, what uh, one, one person can, can do sometimes uh, if we have that, uh, not only the optimism of the world, but also the optimism of the intellect. If there's uh, optimism, if we have the political world to do anything, Allah will create, cre um, grant us the creativity to do things. Allah can add strength to our own strength. If Allah see us, sees us trying to do something, He will then assist us further. If you're a father and you're about to travel, you have your two-year-old or three-year-old child, and that child, your daughter or son, tries to pick up the case, you know what you're going to do. You're going to pick up your child, kiss your child first, and then pick up the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pick up Islam and pick up whatever you want to pick up. Have something that's ambitious. Something that you know that is way beyond you, yet it's too big for you. But if we think big, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ya promises, wa ya zidkum quwwatan ila quwwatikum. We do not have to worry about, worry about ourselves. Have a certain type of practice within your house, where you decide now your family is going to fast once a week, maybe Monday or Thursday, or maybe just once, once a month. But bring some routine into the house. Uh, that could be one way to... Um, so, having said that, we need to learn more about our faith, more about uh, to, to defend Islam. And sometimes there are two types of Christians. You get those Christians where you have to deal with them in a comparative way. And there are those Christians who are competitive. Christian Zionists. There's something very ironic about them. They feel that a few million Muslims need to be killed before Christ the Messiah can come, come down. It's very ironic. Isa alayhi salam was the prophet of peace, the prophet of healing. And this is this type of distorted and twisted thinking of some of these. So to those people who are those hostile Christians, those competitive Christians, you need to have a few answers uh, in your pocket and take that out occasionally. Sometimes remind them you know, who created the Holocaust, who created colonialism, uh, the First World War, the Second World War, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, all those horrible wars in the name of religion didn't come from Islam. Even the 100,000 Aboriginal children that were stolen by, by Catholics and uh, treated horribly, 130,000 orphans were shipped off from England to <coughs> Australia. Today they are still crying about that. They are trying to connect with their parents. Muslims, on the other hand, have taken orphans and they have honored orphans because the Rasul Sallallahu was an orphan. In South Africa, where I'm from, many white girls, a hundred years ago, uh, young girls had children. The Muslims adopted these children. Many of those children became Imams and Kufal and Shuyukh. Um, in South Korea, there were a few orphanages, there were a few Turkish, um, uh, Turkish soldiers living out in that area. They were so exemplary in their conduct. Conduct. They treated the orphans so well that these people wanted to know but what's your religion all about. Ankara was very secular, didn't want them to preach or teach Islam. But then there was a change in government in Ankara and finally they allowed them to teach Islam only in the barracks. Today there's about 50,000 South Koreans who are Muslim and some of the finest masajid in the central business district of Seoul. And when 9-11 happened, not only South Korea, but quite a few countries in that region asked their CEOs to study Islam at least for three months. Now that came just because Muslims were treating orphans well. But we have many, many episodes of, of, of um, excellence and where Muslims really practice their religion. We do not have to stand back for anyone. As far as these, uh, many of the, uh, most uh, uh, of the good, uh, the Christians, mainstream, mainstream Christians, 
we can remind them that we share so many things with them, whether it's the golden rule, the noble, um, noble rule, or the rule of uh, good neighborliness. We have the Beatitudes, we have the 10 to 13 commandments, depending on the count. Uh, we have so many things. The, um, uh, our dislike for those seven deadly sins and many other things that we have in common. But we all as communities are challenged to live up to our ideals and to live up and not to maim and distort those ideals. We are followers of each and every religion that maim and distort the ideals of those particular religions. We also need to um, be able to distinguish between what's a false narrative and a true narrative. There's a false narrative of being Christian and so the, the true Christians are those who love the golden rule. The true Christians are like a Pope Francis, a person, man of peace. Almost all Muslims love him because of what he's doing. A person who's champion of the poor. And then you have those false narratives of the KKK and other people who feel that everyone else who differs with them needs to be eliminated or exterminated. There's a true narrative of Judaism, there's a false narrative. There's a true narrative of Islam and a false narrative. The true narrative is of course the examples we are giving you of wonderful Muslims, Muslims who are peace loving, Muslims who are saving the lives of other people. Just recently in, in, in Kenya, on a bus, some Muslim uh, extremists entered the bus and wanted to hurt the Christians on the bus. All the Muslims stood up. You first have to kill us before you're going to touch these Christians. Muslims have saved thousands of Jewish lives in Albania. We have saved 2,000 Jewish lives in the Grand Mosque of Paris in France. Um, in Rwanda, uh, when there was a, a massacre, the Imam, the Mufti of Rwanda, got all the Imams together and they had a uh, they, made, they made a decision that they are going to protect every Christian, whether they are Hutu or Tutsi, with their lives. They then divided some of the Masajid in half, and so half was for Muslim worship, half was for Catholic worship. And because the Catholic priests had to flee, they couldn't take their clothing with, the Muslim tailors made clothing for the Catholics. And when the Catholic girls had to marry, the Imams became the Wakils of those girls, giving them off into uh, Christian marriages. Islam, if Islam had to kill, if Islam means that it's a religion of violence, we have to kill everyone who disagrees with us, India would not have a majority of, of Hindu community. We've ruled India for, for 700 years. The, 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 the teaching, La Ikraha Fi Deen, has been very much internalized. Omar bin Khattab went to Jerusalem, and in the year 1638, he said, well, the Jews have not been allowed in Jerusalem, let them come back. Salahuddin, 1187, uh, took back the city after 90 years of horrible rule by crusaders, and he re-allowed the Jews into Jerusalem. Not only that, Muslims also cleaned up places. Before the Rasul Salahuddin came to Medina, Aisha Radulan has said that uh, Medina used to be a filthy place. But because the Rasul said, At-Tahur Shatrul Iman, that cleanliness is half of faith, Medina became a pure place. When Omar bin Khattab went to Jerusalem, he found that there was a, a, a garbage area where the most sacred place of the Jews was. He asked that to be cleaned up. So Muslims not only preached At-Tahur Shatrul Iman, cleanliness is half of faith, they love that. They practiced that. They implemented that. Today we have 2.4 persons per 100,000, uh, the murder rate in the Muslim community. In the West it is 7.5 and in the United States it's even higher. Um, many places in Karachi is much more safer to walk than some of the inner cities in the United States or some other cities. We have so much to offer. Ten years ago I went to Boston and the city allowed Muslims to take an abandoned school. Many Muslims moved into the area, but in a year or two, the area had less crime than it had. It was a crime 
a high crime area, and because of Muslims moving into that area, um, it became a very, very low crime area. We have so much to offer. We cannot sit back and do absolutely nothing. Don't wait for November 4th to come. Already things are happening and you need to be proactive. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be with you if you also work on yourselves. So we need to um, become more spiritual, more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn off those televisions. Don't waste time with television. Make sure that you uh, have Quran reading in your house. You pray together as a family. Those who pray together, stay together. Those who eat together, stay together. And those who stay together, stay together. Allah wants us to succeed. And so the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, So that's how wonderful, what, what a grand, what a... Um, what, how easy you have it. That if something good happens and you thank Allah that is good for you, something difficult or bad happens and it's not, uh, and you have sabr, that's also good for you. So both ways we win, whether we have um, difficulty or whether we have um, uh, ease. But also remember the uh, hadith uh, of the Rasul sallallahu <laughs> Get to know Allah in times of ease and Allah will get to know you in times of difficulty. May Allah subhanahu wa bless us, may Allah subhanahu wa guide us, may Allah help us to educate ourselves, not only about Islam and the beauties of Islam, but all other communities. We are not only uh, uh, sent out to be khayra uh, ummah, ukhrijat lil muslimin, but ukhrijat the Lubnaniyin or Saudiyin or Misriyin. Allah didn't send us as a mercy only for a particular community, for a particular city. Allah sent Bukhrijatli Nas. Allah sent us uh, out as a mercy to all people, but only to people, Lil Alameen, to all creation, the animals, the environment. Uh, Muslims should be the forefront of um, fighting environmental degradation and recycling, going for alternative energies, uh, because these uh, are, we have so much uh, proof for that from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So may Allah make us once again the leaders and not those who are, are being led. May Allah Subhanahu Wa also help us to define what patriotism is. You get a true narrative and a false narrative. One of the reverends, William Sloan, said that there are three patriots. Two bad, one good. The bad patriots are those who are loveless critics and uncritical lovers. And the good patriot has a lover's quarrel with his nation and with his community. We need a lover's quarrel with America. There are some people who are taking this country in a line that the forefathers did not envision. We have a military mission now, not a moral mission. $9.63 trillion war industry security, security, military, and intelligence industries. And it all lies are being weaved just to feed that war industry. Once you know the game plan, that the political chessboard, we are often just looking at the, the <coughs> what do you call these, um, pawns, and not at the rest of the players on, on that board. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those ulul al-bab, those people who are able to go and really see where the main players are and put an end to this war culture. We have so much to offer this country. 10% of all doctors in this country are Muslim. We have an ethic of pure altruism. We have great philanthropy. 100 uh, clinics, free, uh, free clinics that Muslims are offering. Muslim doctors are traveling overseas if two, two weeks at a time, they've uh, performed 100,000 cordial surgeries. So we, we, we don't have to be afraid of that. After those three Muslims were lynched, those three uh, young Muslims in North Carolina, uh, Dia, uh, Yusser, and um, I think uh, Razan, what, what the names were, um, 
the Muslims uh, thought that that was an opportunity to distribute 300,000 pieces of food, to distribute uh, items of food to the poor. Creative and very altruistic. So we are a great community, but each and every one of us now need to become even greater and we need to move from great to excellent, and that's going to be the future for us. May Allah bless us, guide us, and may Allah subhanahu wa inshallah, not long from now, we'll hear about Muslim presidents, uh, many, many Muslim Congress people, senators, and so many other things that we could never have uh, thought. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, المسلمين الله منصور المسلمين في كل مكان الله منصورنا ولا تنصر علينا وامكرنا ولا تنكر علينا وهدنا سبل السلام وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منا وما بطن الله ما تفعلنا البلاء والوباء وزنا وزلاج ومحن والسوء الفتن الله ما سرق عنا السوء بما شئت وكيف شئت إنك على ما تشاء قدير الله ما سرق عنا السوء بما شئت وكيف شئت إنك على ما تشاء قدير الله مصرف عن السوى بما شئت وكيف شئت إنك على ما تشاء قدير والحمد لله رب العالمين Two last thoughts جماعة المسلمين One is that sometimes we're becoming so apologetic we're becoming so paranoid and so fearful that we are buying into the framing of other people Other people are defining some sacred concepts of Islam and suddenly we say, don't use that word, don't do that. We're afraid to use that. The word madrasa sometimes sounds like a terrorist camp. And yet the madrasa is a place where ethical men and ethical women are being trained. A beautiful book out by Professor Ibrahim Musa on what is a madrasa. He studied in the Madaris in India. So read that. <coughs> we also have terms like Allah. Sometimes becomes one woman was fired from Wheaton University simply because she said Allah and the God Christians used uh, is, a, uh, is a saying. Minarat in, in Switzerland sometimes became like missiles because of the fascists out there. And so we have the word jihad, such a beautiful word. I was giving a uh, lecture once and spoke about the need. Uh, to construct the ineffable, the need to embrace beauty and have a cult of beauty in Allah Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal and creating what we call a jihad of monumentality to leave something behind that is so lasting that will outlive us and will just have uh, unspeakable beauty. And one Muslim came up and said, you know, I'm use the J word. Uh, the word jihad is a J word. So don't create these J words and S words and M words. Sharia is an Islamic term, it's integral to Islam. Jihad is integral to Islam, da'wah. Um, and we shouldn't be shy to use that. And simply because a few bigots are defining that and providing a, 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 a false narrative, a narrative of these, doesn't mean we have to be bullied by them and we suddenly decide we cannot use uh, these particular words. But study the Sharia. Dr. Omar Farooq Abdullah has about 40 page article on the Nawawi uh, Foundation site on living Islam with purpose. If you see the Sharia paradigm, the beautiful thinking of the Sharia, you would not want to have anything else. And then just the last point. So the one point that these uh, uh, Islamophobes make is Islam is violent. Uh, the Quran teaches us to kill everyone who doesn't agree with us. Second one is that um, Islam suppresses women and it's just the opposite. One of the professors of law, uh, Asifa Qureshi Landis, she's of the opinion that the Sharia law would be great for all women, not only for Muslim women. Sharia law says that women do not have to cook, to clean or to raise their children. 
and that comes from Omar bin Khattab, it comes from the Rasul, it's written in the, the, the Kutubul Fiqh, in the books of Fiqh. Of course our culture, our mothers are spoiling us, our sisters, but they're doing that as favor, uh, as favors and those are not duties. Women do not have to cook, to clean and to raise the children, they do it as favors and not as duties. There are ten nations that had Muslim presidents and vice presidents that were uh, that of, of female. Since the 1980s, America never had a vice president or president who was female. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Turkey, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Mali, Kosovo, uh, Senegal, um, Mauritius, Iran also had a vice president, the daughter of Ayatollah. Ten women, ten countries, the most numerous, most popular, uh, populous countries uh, had Muslim, uh, Muslims as leaders. And so, um, be proud of Islam, be proud of the fact that Allah SWT has given us this deen, but Allah is also giving us a responsibility. And if you are not going to carry out that responsibility, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ Allah is going to replace us and let other people carry the banner of Islam. Allah bless us, protect us. Allah reward those of us who love Islam dangerously, who love Islam that is under fire and Islam that is under siege. But um, Allah has promised us that His light will prevail till the end of time. And let us believe that. And may Allah SWT use each and every one of us as ambassador of all of us to turn tragedies into triumph and all of us turn hostilities into hospitality and turn all the meanness that is out there into meaningfulness. May Allah SWT give us a life of purpose, a life of great ajr, and these are fantastic uh, times for us to earn the reward from Allah SWT. We pray that that reward will be Jannah, and the ridwan and the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan wa ita idhi al-qurba wa yanha an al-fahsha wal munkar wal baq da'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun fadhkurullah al-azim yathkurkum wa da'uhu yastajib lakum wa la dhikrullah ta'ala a'la wa awla wa azza wa jal wa tam wa ham wa akbar wa Allah wa ya'lamu ma tasna'u tasna'u one quick point before we leave, and just about the Syrian refugees. We know, of course, that um, Steve Jobs' father was a, a Syrian immigrant. Uh, there's many people from the Vietnamese community who came over as boat people. Today, they are the most prosperous people and entrepreneurial people. When they came over, we never said each one of them could be potentially Viet Cong. We allowed them in and they proved themselves. 750,000 immigrants into the U.S. after 9-11. There's not a single act of terror that came from that particular community. Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, peace be with him, was also an immigrant. And she had to go and give birth in another place. And some say at the end of time, towards the last days, she also sought refuge in Turkey. So we speak about immigrants. That's the reason the Canadians are advancing when they are encouraging immigrants. The Virgin Mary herself was an immigrant. Um, so may Allah subhanahu wa bless the Syrians, all their struggle. May Allah subhanahu wa bless Muslims. And may Allah subhanahu wa reward us and uh, let us come out on top. We can only be great if we have faith.